Mixing with Mike mixing tip. Using VU meters to set levels in a DAW. Uh, one of the things that uh, I think is uh, more, probably more um, important than, than almost anything in starting a mix and kind of working with some different elements of a mix is starting by setting um, basic levels. So I'm going to start here and do like what might be the most obvious example, um, which is working with the vocal. Now, this is something that is already recorded, so I'm not actually getting into the setting levels like in terms of automation and things like that, although you can use this for that type of thing. What I want to focus on in this tip is talking about how you can balance something out so when you get into the next level of processing you're going to uh, achieve um, you know get some balance and I'll show you kind of how this works so um, in my history I've worked mostly um, with VU meters working on tape machines and so I got very used to seeing this and there's something very pow powerful about working with VU meters uh, VU stands for volume unit and it's meant to represent the way that we hear so it's meant to when you look at the meter it will show you level variances that um, go right or speak very well to the way that you're actually hearing something and that's like the whole idea of a volume so it's not perfect there are many imperfections in this in that it is weighted so that the the uh, metering and the way it responds to different frequencies is more akin to the way that we hear which is not linear across the frequency spectrum, right? So it, it wavers. Uh, that's just part of the natural Flutter and Munson curve. So when starting with something like a vocal or with any instrument, particularly live performances, not program performances, because most pro program performances, when you get to them, you can program in um, the volumes of individual notes, either uh, through the velocity um, or just you end up doing it through quantization or whatever. So uh, let's focus on this. And, and the idea of this is an exercise to show you. So what I have here is um, just a VU plugin. Um, this is a, a Klanghelm uh, plugin, um, and it's it's really inexpensive. There's also some free ones. Um, um, uh, LSR Audio has a free one. It's not in AEX, so uh, but it is in uh, VST and audio units, and you can do. And that one is also very good. You don't want to just get just like something that looks like a VU meter. Like this is actually something that's modeled. And the reason why I'm calling this up is that it actually. Um, they, you know, they carefully modeled the behavior of a VU meter. And in fact, when you get to it, you can get into settings that control the characteristics and the rise and fall of everything. So there, there are some aspects to this which are, um, uh, you know, are, it's deeper than, than just that. So one of the things that we'll have to deal with here, we're dealing with VU, not peak metering. So there's a PPM. That's a whole other thing. Um, and the reference is minus 18, so that's sort of a standard here. And what I'm going to be really looking at is I'm going to look to balance the vocal level out, so what I'm really seeing is most of my activity within the vocal that's kind of occurring within a range, and I'm going to more or less say between minus 7 and 0, although it will extend slightly plus minus either way. And what I'm really looking to do is to sort of balance things out in the track before I get into the processing. Now. There are a couple ways of doing this. One is to automate a level plugin. So we could just put a gain plugin as the first plugin slot prior to this, and then this would be feeding in uh, to the meter, and I can make level adjustments there. If you're working in Pro Tools or in any application, it allows you to actually work with the uh, waveform, like in uh, Pro Tools 11 that I'm working with right here. We can work with the clip gain, and I'm just going to kind of show you this um, right here. So I'm just going to zoom in on the meter so we can see this a little bit better focus in on this and let's just kind of pick up a few lines here and I'll just kind of show you the process. So let's listen to the vocal as it stands and then we'll just follow the VU meter movements and then we'll talk about how do you manage this. Yeah. Slow down baby, take a moment and breathe. I can hear what you're saying. Mm, stop for a minute, come sit there with me. I can see your refrain and i don't know what to tell ya you're scared i might fail ya and so you're leaving here before it goes wrong don't you know you can't keep running from where you belong again oh you can almost hear it like rising in level as you're going in you, here you again and, and so what I want to do is I'm going to actually raise the overall level up here. So this stuff is going to be too loud, but the beginning levels are going to be a little bit lower. 
This is actually something where it sounds like in the process of recording, the recording level wasn't quite high enough and the engineer was sort of slowly raising up the volume of the preamp gain so that you wouldn't notice the level change difference and in effect actually just created almost a bigger problem. Yeah. We're going to make some corrections with this. <laughs> Slow down, baby. Take a moment. Okay, so let's just start with some of the basics here. So what I'm going to really work on here is just uh, Slow. let's start with the beginning. Yeah. So here we got a little bit of, uh, this is what we call uh, a little bit of church stuff going on here. We got some of the, uh, some of the little grunts and things like that. Yeah. Uh, slow down, baby. And, and here, um, I'm going to stay away from, from that, but I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. And, yeah. Uh, uh, slow down, baby. And, uh. Yeah. Slow down, baby. Take a and now here, now this I'm going to be a, a little bit kind of uh, more or less rough here. I actually, uh, hold on a second here. I have to go and go into slip mode here for a second and then kind of scroll my way back down. Sorry about that. Uh, hope we didn't uh, upset anybody. Hope you didn't lose your lunch on that one. Uh, let's just zoom in here. Slow down, baby. All right. So here, this is a line right here that is high overall. I'm going to balance this in. Slow down, baby. And here I'm just going to kind of work with this a little bit to kind of balance this out. Slow down, baby. Take a moment and breathe. All right. So uh, what I'm now what I want to get to is just yeah. balancing this line. Slow down, baby. Take a moment and breathe. And uh, so all of this from this point on to here, I'm just going to raise up just a little bit. Bring that in. Let's see. Slow down, baby. Take a moment. And uh, pick it up from here. Kind of bring that in. So I'm I'm don't always go by the visual, and this is where I'm looking at the VU meter because I'm trying to keep like an averaging kind of thing going on here. Slow down, baby. Take a moment. And slow down, baby. Take a moment. And here you can hear this. Uh, um, baby is also a little bit loud. Probably should have brought that back just like I did the uh, line over here. So let's see. Slow down, baby. Take a moment and breathe. Bring that back a little bit more. Slow down, baby. Take a moment and breathe. Okay. And Slow down. here, um, um, so what I'm doing here is is sort of a form of manual compression as I'm going Slow along. Slow down, baby. Take a moment and breathe. And and part of the the thing um, that people might get to is like, oh, well, you can kind of compress your way through it, but I'm going to show you why this is a little more valuable. Slow down, baby, take a moment and breathe. All right, now let's raise that up a little bit. Slow down, baby, take a moment and breathe. I can't hear... So you don't want to necessarily lose all the expressiveness, but we want it to also sit really well on the track. Take a moment and breathe. I can't hear what you're saying. All right, so now relative to the previous line, there's a couple of ways to go here. Like this overall sounds a little bit low or loud. Breathe. I can't hear what you say. And there's also a line here, this breathe, breathe. breathe. where I can kind of just pull that back a little bit. A moment and breathe. I can't hear what you say. Mm, stop for a and then here we got a little uh, nice little sibilance in there as well, which is uh, always fun. Uh, and and so what I'm doing here is I'm kind of uh, I'm working in some of these finer what points. You're saying. Mm, stop for a minute. And uh, balancing this out. So it looks like all of this is probably going to be just a little bit lower overall. I can't hear what you're saying. Mm, stop for a minute. Come sit there with me. I okay. And then, so I, uh, if you get the, the basic flow of this and the idea, what do you see? there with me. I can see. I'm just going to follow that, bring that down accordingly. Uh, there was also one other thing in here, like I wanted to bring that up a little bit. Oh, actually, it wasn't that, excuse me. It was this, which I wanted to bring up. 
Stop for a minute, come sit there with me. I can see you're afraid, and I don't. And uh, so, and then we we'll bring this up here, this guy up here. Let's see. Come sit there with me. I can see you're afraid, and I don't. And, and so we'll just kind of go up to, to this point right here. So now what I've done is I kind of have gotten a, uh, a a marker through the song. I can actually go back. I'm just going to select back. Uh, let's see if I can undo uh, that tab to transients and kind of take this overall thing. And I'm going to bring the overall level of this up just a bit, just overall. Yeah. Slow down, baby, take a moment and breathe. I can't hear what you're saying. Mm, stop for a minute, come sit there with me. I can see you're afraid. So if you get the if you get the basic gist of this, come sit there. So that that uh, that line obviously uh, needs a little uh, needs a little help here. So I actually don't need to select that. I can just kind of bring that out. Stop for a minute. Come sit and uh, bring that out. Stop for a minute. Come sit there with me. I can see you're afraid, and I don't. So in in this uh uh and yeah there's there's actually just some other uh finer elements right back in here. So what I'm trying to do here is to kind of level this off in a way that and I did bring this up way too much here, so uh, I'm just gonna back that down a bit. Frey. Let's go from the beginning here. Yeah. Slow down, baby. Take a moment and breathe. I can't hear what you're saying. Mm, stop for a minute. Come sit there with me. I can see you're afraid. And I don't know what to tell you. You're scared I might fail you. Right, so that's going into the next section already. So now we have this, and what we have is more consistent levels. And what, what that ends up meaning is that if you go into uh, just, you know, some kind of a, um, you know, let's say you wanted to run this into a limiter or something like that, and you you know now you wanted to run into a little bit of a compression scheme here i can get some really consistent yeah. results here with the uh slow down baby take a moment and breathe i can hear what you're saying mm, stop for a minute come sit there with me i can see you're afraid and i don't know what to tell you you're scared i might fail you so you can see here once we get out of this section you could see like now the responsiveness starts to change and the idea is to get some consistency in working um, with it so whatever plugin you want like say we want something that's maybe a little bit more warming so i'll just kind of go uh right here with the v comp my favorite uh compressor lately so let's just uh Put this on here. Yeah. Uh, uh. Slow down, baby. Take a moment and breathe. I can't hear what you're saying. Mm, stop for a minute. Come sit there with me. I can see you're afraid. And I don't know what. So go back to the beginning. Yeah. Slow down, baby. Take a moment and breathe. I can't hear what you're saying. Mm, stop for a minute. Come sit there with me. I can see you're afraid, and I don't know what to tell. And what you get is a consistency with the responsiveness of it. Uh, in terms of now, when you put it in the context of the track, it should sit nicely right in the track. <laughs> Take a moment and breathe I can't hear what you're saying mm, Stop for a minute Come sit there with me I can see you're afraid And I don't know And and then just to, uh, just to sort of contrast this What I can do here 
is I can uh, go in and I can bypass the clip gain line, so it's going to be just as the normal would be. Slow down, baby, take a moment and breathe. I can hear what you say. Hitting the compressor less hard Stop overall. For a minute, come sit there with me. I can see you're afraid, and I don't know what to tell you. So let's go back here and uh, just set this up here. Uh, just because the compression is less, so you're actually getting more gain out of it. So. Slow down, baby. Take a moment and breathe. I can hear what you say. Stop for a minute. Come sit there with me. I can see you're afraid. All right, so you get a little bit, of, a little bit more, uh, a lot more movement. So let's unbypass the clip gain. Go back to our previous setting here. Slow down, baby. Take a moment and breathe. I can hear what you say. Stop for a minute. Come sit there with me. I can see your refrain, and I don't know what to tell you. So the, there, what the difference is, and it's hard to match up the two gains when you're kind of working with it. The basic idea of it is that you're getting a balance, like you're able to kind of get that vocal to kind of sit right there. And then you can kind of work in terms of the uh, type of compression you move. You want it to be a little more active. Maybe you go with 1176, get it to kind of pump and breathe more. And it gives you more consistency so that when whatever style of compression, you want to hit it heavy, you want to hit it soft, light, whatever, you're getting consistent results. Now, when you go back later with the automation, in the automation phase, at the, uh, um, getting towards the end of the mix, then you can start to ride in some of that dynamic again, and you'll get this really consistent, solid performance that just sort of sits there. This is one way to do it with a vocal. Also works incredibly well with basses and many other instruments that like guitars and things like that, where you get these inconsistent results and it becomes harder to process. This little bit of work that you think it's like, oh, this is going to take too long. It's like when you go through that, and you could do it very, very quickly as you go through, and then as you just you listen through, you pick out. It's like, oh, that line is a little bit low or a little bit high. You kind of make some fix-ups. When you're done with it, it's like it makes the rest of your work happen so much more cleanly and efficiently that it makes every little bit of it worthwhile. So uh, anyway, there's a, an idea working with VU meters. Uh, this one happens to be very good. It's also cool because actually when you click on it, you can get uh, a bunch of different style meters. So it looks a lot of different ways. So whatever, uh, whatever style you kind of like, I just put this one on because it's bright and clear and easy to see. Uh, but um, working with VU meters and uh, kind of managing that, it just becomes a good visual for an average level. And you could see how when I started to, to um, balance out those levels from word to word, phrase to phrase, how it shows up more consistently in the VU meter. And then that obviously shows you when something is way out, when you see that needle kind of swing too radically in one direction or the other. Mix it with Mike Mixing Tip using VU meters to set levels in a DAW.